Ladies and gentlemen, be careful not to choke on your aspirations, for if you only knew the power of the dark side. <laughs> What's up everyone, welcome back to another round of Star Wars, Star Wars Darth Vader issue number 3. Man, it feels like a long time since issue 2, but I digress. It is written by the glorious Greg Pak and drawn by this guy, because I cannot pronounce names. And this issue begins on the planet of Naboo, and wow, what a beautiful shot this is. And it's here where we see Darth Vader, who is remembering back to a time much simpler, where his life was encompassed with love, flying butterflies, and a large absence of sand. Unfortunately, Vader is taken back to the present by Padme's body double, Sabeb, whom Vader perceived originally as the love of his life, but was sadly mistaken. Vader and Sabeb have just arrived on Naboo in order to recover a hidden recording that will lead them both towards the truth in regards to Padme's death. Vader orders his death troopers to stay posted next to the shuttle while they're gone, but orders his handy dandy droid Zev Zix 7 to tag along. Once the group enters the retreat home, they are suddenly attacked from unknown assailants, but Vader, being a badass, is quick in handling the situation. Sabeb orders everyone to stop fighting. Vader obliges and releases his force chokehold, and it's here where it's revealed that the attackers are Captain Typho. You know, that guy who is Padme's bodyguard, who everyone treated like shit and was totally not as cool as Captain Panaka, and Captain Tonra, a former member of the Naboo security forces who is most likely a random Naboo soldier shown at the end of episode 1. Typho apologizes to Sabeb for their incompetence, for when the two allies saw Sabeb alongside Darth Vader, they initially thought that she might be under duress. Unfortunately, Vader is not so willing to forgive his attackers as he ignites his lightsaber and demands punishment. Sabeb tells Vader to stand down and that she sent the security recordings to Typho and Tanra. Typho and Tanra then reveal that they couldn't decipher the recording and thereby hid the item somewhere within the retreat. So basically, Darth Vader needs to keep these guys alive if he wishes to locate the recording. After passing through a secret door and descending down a flight of stairs, Typho comments and says that he always thought Padme was murdered, but Zev69 butts in, saying that according to the Imperial records within the droid's databanks, Captain Typho was once the bodyguard to Senator Padme during the Separatist Crisis, and that during his watch, Padme was the target of several assassination attempts, two of which happened on the same day while at Coruscant. Typho feels as if he's being interrogated, but Zev clearly states that he is merely collecting relevant data. Vader asks Typho on when was the last time he saw Padme, and he tells him after the clones destroyed the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, for she told Typho that she insisted on traveling to Mustafar by herself, claiming it was a personal matter. The group eventually comes across an old Gungan sub, which they take in order to reach their destination. Along the way, Zev69 begins to ask Tanra questions. Though Imperial records state that Tanra was present during the fighting against the Trade Federation occupation, everything else after that is lost. And according to Tanra, once Padme became a senator, he and Sabe were sent by Padme to go undercover on Tatooine in order to free Anakin's mother, Shimmy Skywalker. But unfortunately, by the time they arrived, Shimmy had already been sent away. So instead, they managed to free at least a dozen or so whom were trapped in slavery. Suddenly, the group's sub is attacked by a giant Kula Claw fish, which manages to crush the sub. But luckily, the group is able to escape just in the nick of time, and it's with that where Darth Vader unleashes his pent-up hatred against the Kula Claw fish, providing his group enough time whilst letting a second Kula Claw fish swim over to finish the job. The group manages to find shelter within a deserted Gungan structure. Both Vader and Sev69 come across an old tribute piece depicting Naboo and its heroes, during the Naboo victory parade at the end of the Phantom Menace. Sabeg points to the little boy. She tells Lord Vader that this was Anakin Skywalker, and that even as a child, he served her queen. Awkward. Vader ignites his lightsaber and smashes a pillar of rocks as he declares that he is losing his patience and demands to see the recording. Tonrock walks over to a secret compartment and hands the recording to the droid. Zev69 is able to easily bypass the recording security, and Shazam! The missing surveillance footage from Padme's apartment is unlocked. The footage reveals a much younger Sabe holding a secret meeting with friends and former associates of Padme, including Typho and Tonra. Sabe declares that as of the night of this recording, the group will call themselves the Amidalians. In addition, they pledge that, that they will find out whoever murdered Padme and killed him. Zev69 says to say, this isn't a clue, but a shrine, and wonders that if they're all after the same target, why bother showing the footage? 
Typho reminds Vader the last time he saw Padme, she went to Mustafar to find Anakin. Years later, the group learns of Vader's domain. And by putting the pieces together, the Amidalians seem to believe that Darth Vader is the one responsible for the deaths of both Anakin Skywalker and Padme. Vader, appearing fed up, admits that he did. But before the Sith Lord can do anything, Tanara activates a button, which is signaling a gargantuan sea monster to come over and to swallow their location whole. Star Wars Darth Vader issue number 3 was a fine issue. I did enjoy seeing the return old Naboo character, Captain Typho. It's not that I enjoy his character, I actually kind of hate him, <laughs> per se, but I find it totally believable that Typho would attempt to solve the death of Padme, something in which he clearly feels responsible for. Seeing Vader continuing to be thrown off by past memories and by the presence of Sabe herself is fantastic. It definitely keeps the playing field in a ways even. My only problem with this issue is I feel in regards to the main plot, not much happens. Also, at the end of the comic, Vader out of nowhere admits to having both murdered Anakin and Padme. Like, what? I understand the whole murdering of Anakin, since the Anakin within Vader died back on Mustafar, but isn't the whole point of the series to find out exactly how Padme died, instead of a excuse being a broken heart? I don't know, perhaps there's something I'm just not seeing. But overall, I did enjoy this issue. Star Wars Darth Vader issue number 3 gets a 7.5 out of 10. Giggity goo.